Let's talk about love. We, we tend to oversimplify love these days by equating it with affection, with those good feelings that we have for another person. Um, and affection's good, but affection's not love. Um, love is better thought about in terms of a self-gift. What are we giving ourselves to? Uh, or we can speak about it in terms of devotion. What are we devoted to? And we need to be self-critical about this and, and really examine ourselves to ask, what am I truly giving myself to? Because it's easy for us to fool ourselves into to thinking that we love something because we know we ought to, um, but, but are we really? And so, for example, you can say that you're a devoted student student and you love your classes, but if the reality is you're spending more time playing video games than you are doing your homework, you know, what you're truly devoted to is your own entertainment. And that tells you something about what you really love. Or in terms of human relationships, you can say you love your girlfriend or your boyfriend because you feel good when you're around them. And that's affection and that's a good thing. But that's not really what love is. To truly love them, you need to invest yourself in that relationship. You need to, to spend time getting to know them as a person, to learn about their needs and their desires, so that you can better give yourself to them in loving service. Love is that gift of self. And if we, if we start to think about love in terms of what we give ourselves to, um, you know, we start to understand that we can't help but love something. We have to love something. Uh, and by that, I mean you have to give yourself to something. You have to spend your time somehow. Something has to occupy your thoughts. Something has to, to be your focus. The question is what? And is it worthy of that gift of self? Because we can give ourselves to something that's, that's beneath us. Um, and that would, would be a disordered love. And that's exactly what sin is. Sin isn't so much a lack of love, but it's when we love something that's not worthy of that gift of self, when our love has become disordered. So what Jesus does in the gospel this, this Sunday is he teaches us how to properly order love. And to be properly ordered, our love has to begin with God. And this is why the first commandment, he says, is to love God with all of our being. Because God himself is love. God is love. And so if our love is going to be properly ordered, we have to first love love. And when we say God is love, what we mean is God is self-gift. Every action of God is a gift of self. That's the inner life of God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, giving themselves to the others for all eternity. The act of creation is an act of love, right? Because God creates by giving a share of himself, a share of his being to everything that is. And out of everything in the universe, what God gives the greatest share of his being to are, are those elements of creation that are made in his image, which is, you know, which is you and I. It's human beings made in the image and likeness of God. So God gives himself to us in love, and it's right, therefore, that our love begins by giving ourselves back to God. Because true love is reciprocal. It's not one-sided. It's not just me giving myself to my beloved, but it's me receiving the gift of my beloved back to me. It's that reciprocal love that is perfect. And so God has first loved us. We have to begin by loving God as well. Now, the second commandment Jesus gives us is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And he says this is like the first. He ties this commandment back to the first. And that's important for us to, to understand because it can be hard for us to love God, right? Love is a, is a self-gift. And it's really difficult for us as physical creatures to give ourselves to something transcendent, to something that we can't see, that we can't touch, that's not close to us. How do we give ourselves to God in that way? Well, in Christ, the transcendent God has become imminent. He has become incarnate. He's come close to us so that we can see him and give ourselves to him. And he's left us his presence in the church and in the sacraments so that we can be devoted to him there. And he also teaches us that the love that we have for one another, he recognizes as love given to him. This is the great message of, of Matthew 25, right? The part of Matthew's gospel where he talks about the final judgment. And he teaches us that we're going to be judged according to how well we did or didn't love our neighbor. So when Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as ourself, he ties this back to that first commandment to love God. Right? We can love God by loving one another because we are made in the image and likeness of God. 
Jesus says that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so this implies that we're loving ourselves as well, doesn't it? And if I love myself as someone made in God's image, it helps me to rightly order my own self-love because it prevents me from loving myself as God because I recognize I'm not God, so I can't make an idol out of myself. But I am made in God's image, and that means I am lovable because I'm made in the image of love. And if I recognize that same image in my neighbor, they're lovable as well. I can love God who is transcendent by loving the image of God in my neighbor who is proximate to me, who is close to me. And that's why Jesus tells us to love our neighbor specifically instead of just saying love everybody generically because your neighbor is close to you. Your neighbor is is near enough to you to, to so that you're able to actually give yourself in a meaningful way to that neighbor. And by loving them as as yourself, as another me, it prevents me from treating my neighbor as something that's beneath me, that's an object for my own use, for my own pleasure, for my own purposes. I have to treat them as another self, another me. So think about your love in terms of your self-gift. What are you giving yourself to? That's a precious gift. It's the best thing that you have to offer. Sin is when you give yourself to something less than 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 yourself something that's not worthy of that gift love is when you give yourself to something that is worthy of that gift which is god who gave that gift to you in the first place and your neighbor who is made in god's image if we love those things if we give ourselves in loving service to god and neighbor then we become more like god who himself is that self gift and that's what it means to be holy Praise be Jesus Christ.